Do you have to be baptized in order to receive the Holy Spirit? Well, the short answer is no. And we're going to look at three sets of scripture today to kind of determine why this is my answer. Now, can they go hand in hand? Yes. There are instances of people, as soon as they come up out of the water, uh, they instantly receive the Holy Spirit. And we tend to probably think this because when Jesus came up uh, after being baptized in the Jordan, uh, he saw the Holy Spirit descend on him like a dove. But we're not going to actually look at you know, Jesus uh, specifically, because I think Jesus is a little bit different. Um, I believe that he already had the Holy Spirit at conception, and then the Holy Spirit just kind of actually descended upon him um, for his ministry work at that point. But uh, that's a different argument. I want to talk about us, right? So do we need to be baptized to receive the Holy Spirit? Again, the answer is no. Let's get into the, the scripture to see why I say that. Okay, so the first set of verses I have for you is Acts 10, 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, surely, No one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So what this passage shows us is that Cornelius and his household, like everyone in the household, received the Holy Spirit before they were baptized. Um, And this, so basically this shows that the Holy Spirit can come upon people before they're baptized. Now, It might be, you know, uh, an isolated incident, right? It may not be this kind of the subtext for everyone. However, I don't believe that that is just exclusive to his household. But it also shows the possibility that it can happen, right? A lot of the people that I've seen that were, you know, became Christian actually felt the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit moved them to get saved, which they then got baptized afterwards. So, I think it is definitely possible to receive the Holy Spirit before you get baptized. Now, God knows everything that's going to happen. Um, so it is possible that he would send the Holy Spirit to kind of seal them, to show them that he was real and to, to move in them, to get them saved. And then they would get baptized afterwards. However, let's look at a different set of verses to kind of see the reverse. So now we're going to go back a little bit, back into Acts 2.38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So here, this passage suggests that they must have been baptized and received repentance, and then they would receive the Holy Spirit. And so in this instance, it's the opposite, right? He is telling them to to be baptized and to repent. And then once they do that, then they will receive the Holy Spirit. And I think that this was kind of the case for a lot of other people. So, you know, you have this first group of people who receive the Holy Spirit almost as God showing them that he is real to get them to move into repentance and baptism. But now you have the second group of people where Peter is saying like, okay, no, go and get baptized and repent first, and then you'll receive a result, you know, the Holy Spirit as a result. Now, I know for my my personal self that I have felt the Holy Spirit more after I got baptized. However, a lot of the times where I wasn't feeling the Holy Spirit where I thought I I should have been, like I, I can feel that the Holy Spirit was there, but not moving very powerfully in me, was before I repented of something, before I gave something over. So a lot of my spiritual breakthroughs were blocked because of something I was holding on to. And as soon as I repented of it, I gave it over to God, I let go of it, and I turned away from that, then I received, you know, an impartation of the Holy Spirit. So I I can definitely see why this would kind of be um, the case, you know, for this group of people. Again, I think it's different per person. So some people have to repent and then they receive the Holy Spirit because they're holding on to stuff. And as soon as they let go of that, they denounce their old lifestyle and they get baptized. Then the Holy Spirit can move in them because they're a clean vessel. However, 
this, the case with Cornelius is a little different because Cornelius already kind of believed. And so that kind of sealed it. And then he got baptized as a result. But also, if you, if you kind of take it into context, Cornelius or Peter, Peter didn't control the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon Cornelius. So it is possible that the Holy Spirit would choose to do so. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we should wait for the Holy Spirit and then get baptized. We should already go ahead and plan to get baptized if we've repented and accepted Christ and then hope that the Holy Spirit would come later. So I don't think that we should wait for the Holy Spirit to move us to repentance and baptism. I think we should choose to do it because we know that we're supposed to. We're called to baptize and be baptized and then, you know, hope that the Holy Spirit shows up later on, which the Holy Spirit probably will. He probably will show up at some point. But if we have not felt him yet, then we should go ahead and do the things that we are called to do because scripture commands it. All right, now I want to look at one last set of verses also in Acts, but now towards the end of Acts in Acts 19, 1 through 6. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked them, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So what this shows is that they were baptized in the name of Jesus, and then after the after Paul laid his hands on them, then they received the Holy Spirit. So again, what is kind of the the crux here, or what's the the distillation of all this information? Well, it's that no, you do not have to be baptized for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. However, I don't think that we should wait for the Holy Spirit to to you know come upon us before we get baptized. I don't think we should just try to get the Holy Spirit to move, especially if you're a new believer or maybe you're somebody who's kind of on the fence and you're like, well, if, if God would move, then I would get saved. I don't think that that's the right way to go. I think that you should repent. You should accept Christ. You should get baptized because those things are mandated, right? The Holy Spirit coming upon you is not mandated. Will the Holy Spirit come upon you at some point? Probably, probably, because he wants to empower believers to be able to go out and preach the gospel to baptize others, right? So I think that the Holy Spirit probably will come upon you if you already follow those things. Can he come upon you without being baptized? Yes. Will he? It's not a guarantee. So anyway, those are just my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. God bless. Bye.